procedures in place to protect against cyber uh, attacks and also uh, assessments of the risks related to foreign ownership, um, uh, control uh, and uh, many other aspects uh, of uh, potential vulnerabilities related to telecommunications in general and 5G networks uh, in, in, in particular. There's no any cybersecurity issues for us. There's no any evidence from the US to say that. Now there are some obstacles raising funds from Western banks, so we try domestically. However, domestic banks have high interest rates. So this time the bond issuance is just a test. For more on this now, David Papp joins us from Edmonton in Canada. He's an independent technology and cybersecurity expert. Welcome back to the program, David. Now, 5G is promising to revolutionise mobile data. Tell us what we can expect from the technology and how soon will it become mainstream? I think uh, every carrier in the world, uh, when it comes to mobile devices, is working on some kind of plan for 5G. It's going to be at least 10 times faster than what we're getting right now on LTE. The problem that we have with this technology is that it's a very dense technology where we require cell phone towers to almost be on every city block in order for you to have a signal to this high speed. It doesn't work where you can have very long distances like on 4G, LTE, or 3G. Um, this technology is, doesn't travel as far in order to achieve the higher speeds. Interesting. Now, tell us more uh, about, I guess, the infrastructure. So who's leading the way in terms of developing uh, these extra towers and other bits of infrastructure in order to make this a reality? Every, like I said, every telco around the world is trying this out. The Koreans uh, have done so very successfully and have about 4 million devices back from uh, October of this year. China is definitely leading the way and it has plans for 150 million subscribers in early 2020. Um, I know that Verizon uh, in the USA uh, has de deployed some, some excellent things and e like everybody is trying out 5G and there's some specific test cases around the world where they are experimenting with neighborhoods because as I indicated, they require new cell phone towers to make this work. Mm. Now, you mentioned China there. Let's look at the Chinese tech giant Huawei because it is one of the world leaders in 5G technology at the moment. But the US seems determined to block the use of its technology, not only in America, but around the world. Remind us how Huawei fell out of favor with Washington. I, that's very unfortunate what happened there. Obviously, a lot of politics involved, but there was the arrest of the Huawei CFO, uh, Meng Wango, and the USA claimed that there, uh, that Huawei had violated US uh, business san sanctions against Iran and was they were doing business with that country. And unfortunately, this created, a, as we all know, a big global uproar on all of this. And... Huawei certainly is at the forefront of 5G technology, but yet uh, the USA wants nothing to do with it. Mm. Now, we know that one of the founders of Huawei was himself a former soldier in China's People's Liberation Army, but that was many years ago. So do you share the fears that Washington has over Huawei? I don't think so. I don't share those fears. I, I believe what's happening is that it's another race, and this is the race to 5G. There was a race, if people remember, to LTE, the, the prior 4G. And uh, the Americans claim that they had won that race, but to what purpose? Like, I feel that they're making this seem very urgent for purposes of making big decisions and getting a lot of forefront on the technology. But the US LTE cell phone network is actually one of the slowest in the world, even though they won that race. And I fear that if you go too aggressively to win this 5G race, 
you are going to sacrifice potentially having a solid network in place. And let's also remember that the people who will suffer with this are the people who are in the rural areas. It's the cities that are getting the 5G technologies because of the density and the requirement to have cell towers almost every block. You're not going to see that out in the country. Now, we know Washington has warned against American businesses from doing business with Huawei, but it's also telling its international allies not to choose Huawei technology over firms from other countries. I'm wondering, do you think Washington's uh, vendetta against Huawei will have a broader impact on the rollout of 5G technology around the world? Again, I don't think that's the case because there's so many other companies who are working on 5G technology. We've got Google, Apple, Qualcomm, Verizon, AT&T. They're all like everybody is going out there and experimenting with their own version. Um, so I think that it is unfortunate that they're blocking Huawei from contributing to it because they are uh, quite at the forefront of that 5G race. Uh, but I don't think it's going to have a severe impact on that. Okay, David Papp in Edmonton, it's always great to get your analysis. Thank you for that.